Do you like fighters or spacecraft design? Grab your copy of the first Space Dock reference book all about these topics on our Patreon through the link in the description and pinned comment below. Hello everybody and welcome back to Space Dock. I'm Hojuana and today we're cutting up an onion from a previous video and examining one of the inner layers to take a closer look at point defence, or closing weapon systems, or active protection systems. These are all slightly different, but broadly speaking they're weapons designed to shoot down incoming munitions. This encompasses really any weapon, because well, if it shoots, it can shoot defensively. The first and probably most well-known version is gun-based kinetic weapons, be they chemical or electromagnetic. These come in three-ish varieties. High volume of fire, low volume of fire, relatively speaking, and a sort of hybrid combination of the two. They all fire rounds into the path of the incoming target before it impacts, and more often than not have their own radar that also tracks each individual outgoing shot to see how well it does. This is impressive because the high volume systems like the US's Phalanx can spurt out a crazy amount of rounds to keep track of, and they've been doing that since the 70s. More modern systems have obviously gotten far more precise due to technological improvements over half a century, so have moved towards comparatively lower volume of fire but with a higher probability of hit. Some systems like the OTO Malara 76mm even have aerodynamically guided projectiles that the gun steers into the target. Space Dock Patreon members may recognise this gun from the fighter design book and we're working on another one. That gun, and others like the Millennium Gun, can also go with that hybrid approach I mentioned before. They fire special rounds filled with sub-projectiles that detonate at a pre-programmed distance, designed to saturate a volume of space to ensure sure a hit on target. Gun-based kinetic systems have a major disadvantage though, their short range due to low velocity. Kinetics are already the shortest range weapon type you can get because of this, but combined with the fact that incoming fire will have a high closing velocity, that is, missiles are coming at you very quickly, then there's a very short window of opportunity for close-in weapon systems to be useful, as in a couple of seconds. If you include missiles that actively dodge around and don't just fly on a boring predictable path, it gets even more complicated. While on this subject, why do the missiles in the Expanse never really do this? They can fly across the stellar system but can't scoot to the side a bit? Anyway, that is why so many gun-based systems lean so heavily towards sheer volume of fire. Even then, a missile that gets hit doesn't just magically disappear into nothingness. It may have been mission killed, but the inert remains of the missile, or the fragments it left behind, is still going to be moving towards you at high speed. For real-life naval vessels, you might assume the fragments from a missile would just fall into the water water, but anti-ship missiles fly really quickly so that's not necessarily the case. And in space obviously that possibility doesn't exist at all. Any fragments just keep on going and the short engagement range of guns means you won't be able to move the ship out of harm's way. A longer range alternative is lasers, because the beam travels at light speed. The actual effective range depends on all sorts of factors like the size of the lens, but a laser based point defence system will almost always completely outclass a kinetic one in space. Unless Unless it's really low power. As mentioned in the laser weapons video, they can bore through a target if they can track it, hitting vulnerable internal components like propellant tanks. Or if they are powerful enough, just completely vaporise the missile before it can get anywhere near. You can also have one laser generator feeding into multiple turrets, switching between them as necessary and allowing it to switch between incoming threats almost instantaneously. Also, as long as it's not a chemical laser which needs fuel, lasers don't require ammo, which is an extreme advantage compared to guns that could very well run out in the midst of battle. Obviously, that is bad. So what's the downside? Well, the downsides of any laser system really, which I covered in the laser weapons video, like the missiles potentially having protective coatings to reduce laser effectiveness. As for real life versions, they've been looked into for years, but there's not been any brought into service for point defence purposes just yet. Most of the laser weapons that are in service, or close to it, like the ANSEQ-3 on the USS Ponce, are intended instead for engaging drones and similar asymmetric threats. 
It goes without saying, but both guns and lasers in broadside or spinal mounts just aren't fit for purpose as point defence systems. They need turrets to work. Or do they? Allow me to introduce you to the weird and wacky world of phased array lasers. These work just like phased array radars, in that you have a big flat array of emitters that each emit their own signal, which all get added together into one big beam. For radars, electronically controlling when each individual emitter emits makes it possible to steer the entire array's beam in an instant with no moving parts. With a lot of effort and some technological breakthroughs, a similar idea can be applied to lasers, leading to a laser weapon that can point at anything it can see without needing a turret. This is some complicated cutting edge stuff here, and I may have gotten some things about it wrong, so it's likely I'll return to this topic in a future video. Subscribe now for that and future Onion Layers. Also, I don't know if there is even a proven example of such beam steering in a real life laser weapon yet. If there is such a thing, it's incredibly classified, so War Thunder forums, get on it. Speaking of War Thunder, there are an increasing number of hard kill active protection systems entering service with armoured vehicles, which are basically mini point defence systems. While some of them, like Trophy, are mounted to little turrets of their own, others aren't. AMAP ADS and Iron Curtain have multiple fixed elements that detonate directly towards an incoming object, or have two stages like Arena to much the same effect. All these systems are kinetic, typically striking the incoming objects with explosive formed penetrators at extremely short range, usually less than the length of the vehicle they're mounted to. While this does leave fragments of the incoming projectile to hit the vehicle, not to mention the blast wave from the explosion, the primary target of these systems is projectiles carrying high explosive anti-tank warheads, which can be knocked off target or triggered early, leaving them relatively harmless. Some systems claim to be effective against much higher velocity armour-piercing fin stabilised discarding Sabre rounds, knocking them off axis and reducing their potential, but I'm not sure if this is a proven capability or not. There are other types of active protection system that use little tiny missiles to counter incoming objects. Iron Fist shoots them out of a turret, but the US Quick Kill system actually fires them vertically where they then reorient to zap off toward the target, which leads nicely into the next variety of point defence weapon. Missiles. Much like how missiles as a weapon have much longer range in combat due to guidance, the same can be said of anti-missile missiles. Because they carry an engine all of their own, and can change their trajectory, they can be fired at an incoming target while it's still a fair distance out, and end up with a very high probability of intercepting it. Even if the target starts dodging, the counter-missile can just redirect itself to ensure a collision, or to get close enough that a sub-projectile filled warhead can do its work. These are almost as common in real life as gun point defense Defenses, with some examples being America's rolling airframe missile, which has been included in a version of the Phalanx that replaces the gun with a missile pod. There's also the British Sea Dart, which was in an incident during the First Gulf War when the USS Jarrett, USS Missouri, and HMS Gloucester came under attack from a shore based missile battery. The response from the three ships was as follows Missouri launched chaff countermeasures, which the Phalanx on Jarrett opened fire at, striking the battleship. One of the missiles missed, and the other was successfully destroyed by a sea dart from Gloucester. There's another type of missile that sort of applies here, though they aren't technically point defence. Anti-ballistic missiles, or ABMs. These are particularly relevant to space combat because many of them are designed to engage targets that are in space during a coast phase, or even satellites, and as such are designed to manoeuvre in vacuum. These come under the umbrella of Kinetic Kill Vehicle, or KKV, and basically consist of a sensor and some manoeuvring engines that flies itself into the target. No matter the system in use, all of them cannot do their job without good sensor equipment to recognise an incoming threat, and to then properly target it for destruction. These can be built into the weapon itself, but they can also just use data from the ship's main systems instead, but proper software and engagement rules are very important, as the friendly fire example of the phalanx shooting in the Missouri demonstrated. However, capable sensors may not necessarily be possible in all settings. For example, computers being networked is a bad idea in Battlestar Galactica, so colonial ships instead rely on either overwhelming volume of fire, as seen in the miniseries, or short-range flak fields to obliterate almost any missile or fighter nearby. If you squint hard enough, then the regular style of sci-fi shields can kind of come under this umbrella too. Even no sentinels protecting the big drills in the Matrix, or the fighters swarming the Harvester Queen could count here if you're loose enough with the definitions. 
High-tech or low-tech, point defense plays a vital role in any combat involving missiles, and can also be used against other small targets too. Its effectiveness strongly depends on the specific system in use, and let's be honest, plot requirements as well. But it also provides another avenue for adding flavor to a setting. You can support Space Dock by joining our Patreon where you can get our Space Fighter design reference book. Alternatively, you can support us directly through YouTube by giving us super thanks or by becoming a channel member. Thanks to our supporters and thank you for watching.